Ladies and gentlemen, independent Americans around the country and around the world, this is a moment in history that we have been talking about on this show for years and is now culminating around one important Senate race in particular. So in the midst of all the other presidential chaos, there is one Senate race that could change history, determine the fate of the Senate, and I think inspire our movement in particular. So I am very happy to bring back a returning champion, the great and powerful, and even greater and more powerful since last time he joined us, Dan Osborne is back on Independent Americans. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Paul. It's good to be back. It's been a hot uh, minute. It's been a hot minute, right? I mean, it's yeah. been about six months. You were on in May, but it, it, it's probably running a campaign is probably like a deployment. Every day probably feels like a week or a month, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, I uh, I uh, live in the moment. I live in uh, whatever I can control in my little three foot world. Uh, that's that's what I do. You know, uh, sorry, my wife's getting ready to leave, and so I'm in my garage. This is my uh, this is my safe space out here. I like it, and actually, to that point, we got a lot to get into. I got I got a bone to pick with you that you may not even be aware of. Okay. You kind of stole my COVID backdrop here. I don't know if you saw my show COVID backdrop during uh, the pandemic. It was pretty close. I mean, I had the flags and I had a car behind me. Uh, I think my car is a little different. So I'm going to start with maybe the easiest question of all. What car is that behind you? And what have you this got in garage right there? It's a 88 Firebird. Uh, oh. me, and my, uh, me and my son are working on and, so, and uh, uh, you know, we work on it when we can. Uh, a lot of times he'll be he'll be working on it. Uh, hang on. He'll be working on it with his friends and I'll come home from a late night of campaigning and I'll have all kinds of things tore apart. Uh, and uh, I'll end up staying up till midnight, helping them uh, with their uh, snafus. <laughs> Does the Firebird have a name? You know what? No, it does not. We might, we might have to put that out as a campaign challenge, right? Name Dan's fire. There we go. And anybody, then all right, anybody so out there watching this has a has a name for the silver 88 Firebird, that would be uh that'd be perfect. Do 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 you do the sticker on the hood, or is that a subject of controversy among Firebird owners, or where do you come down on that? Yeah, I mean it's not a Trans Am. So it would be it would be kind of cheating if I did. Uh but my, my son wants to paint it uh red uh and we have a i have a uh well shoot i have a i have a 350 chevy sitting over on the other side of the garage that we're gonna we're gonna take the v6 out and put the 350 in i love it so so maybe this start to our conversation underscores why you are the man of the political moment in america and why this has all come full circle from the last time we talked we're going to get into the campaign you're, you're, you're really capturing, I think, the attention of people around the country and around the globe uh, as you're now you know, leading in some of the polls against Deb Fisher. But let's come back to the question I ask everybody. It's been a wild time. Where are you, man? And, and how are you in the midst of all this? Yeah, you know, I'm doing I'm doing great. Uh, you know, the uh, Fisher attack ads started about a month ago. Uh, my family wasn't super involved. You know, they were just watching me come and go and do events and things like this. And then they see their they see their old man and their husband getting attacked on uh, TV and tabloids and everything else uh, by somebody trying to cling to power. And, uh, you know, they've, re they've really rallied around me. So it's been it's been special. We're, we're tighter than we ever have been before. And uh, so I suppose that's a silver lining. But yeah, I'm, I mean, having, I'm having fun, Paul. I've, I, I've done nothing but go to a factory and clock in and uh, rent, wrench on machines for the last 20 years. So I've gotten to branch out in, into Nebraska. Uh, I love this state. I, I, I didn't realize how special it actually was until I got to do things like go to the state fair, all the county parades. Uh, I probably put on too much weight, <laughs> eating fried turkey legs and funnel cakes, but uh, it's it's been a joy. The people in Nebraska are, are pretty special. I, I think folks who've been watching you can see that, right? That you're really enjoying this being out among the people. You've been an organizer. You've been a leader your whole life, but seeing you out there flexing this new skill set and doing this new kind of a role, um, you know, I think what, what continues to resonate is your authenticity. So, uh, you know, here we are now, you know, five months after we talked to you last time, you're leading in the polls. You've got a new poll coming out almost every week or every day. Now you're up the last one. I saw you're, you're breaking 50 percent uh, for folks that don't know you're running against a, a, a Republican incumbent. 
who in my view seems to be lazy and extremely partisan, but I won't put words in your mouth. Can you talk about how are you doing this? How, why is this working in your view? You know, you, you, you can, kind of came out of nowhere to most folks. We've been watching and the independent movement's been watching. But for folks who are saying, hey, where the heck did this come from? Why is this happening? How do you describe the momentum uh, that, that you now have, have harnessed in Nebraska? Well, I'm going to tell you a little story, Paul. Uh, it's a story about a society of mice. Uh, they're just like us. Right. They go to work every day. They send their kids to school and they hold elections every four years. And, uh, you know, they uh, a, a great cat. It's, they're, they're a society of mice ruled by cats. And, uh, you know, election time comes around and, and a great cat tells them, hey, I'm going to I'm going to take care of you guys and make your lives better. And four years comes around and uh, they, their lives aren't getting any better. So they, uh, they uh, elect uh, the, the white cats that promise them that they're going to do better. And uh, four years goes by, of course, nothing changes for their mice. And so they start electing all kinds of different cats, tabby cats and, uh, you know, hairless cats, whatever you want to whatever you want to do. But one day they realize the problem is it's not the type of cat we're electing, is that we're electing cats. Mm. And, uh, you know, and I think that's the message that I've done 150 publicly advertised events. Uh, probably well, closer to 160 now after last weekend I did a I did a dozen in two days uh, and the mess and the messages were we're ruled by millionaires and billionaires uh, and it's the corporations the enemy the Republicans aren't the enemy Democrats are not the enemy it's it's these these corporations uh, and especially in the form of Citizens United that states corporations are people and uh, you know money's free speech and they can donate an unlimited amount of money to uh, independent expenditures. Uh, I don't think we have to talk any more about how problematic, problematic that is and how, how much influence uh, corporations have on, on, on our government. And uh, that's something I want to change. You know, uh, I don't want to be ruled by cats anymore. I'm, I'm a mouse. I'm, I, I made $48,000 the last 12 years I worked, or excuse me, 12 months I worked. And uh, less than 2% of our elected officials come from the in the House and Senate come from the working class. We're just simply not represented, and I think that's where that's where we found ourselves. Uh, that's why the independent piece is so important to me. An independent to me means uh, I'm not going to be beholden to a party boss, a corporation. I'm going to be beholden by the people who elected me. The way the way the way the framers of the Constitution intended it to be a government uh, by and for the people. Right now, I think it's just the government uh, for the one percent and the corporations. That's the message that 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 I have. I mean, we we talk about issue. Everything I talk about uh, in these public events is uh, all it is is uh, we just talk about issues. We don't talk about parties. We talk about issues, and when we do that, we agree on so much stuff, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on. But we're seeing we're seeing parties. The two parties uh, fighting amongst each other. We're we're seeing farm bills not getting done again. It's on extension from 2018. Bushel prices, bean prices, uh, crop insurance is outdated, uh, and farmers are losing because people want to play party politics. We're seeing it on the border. I mean, it's over and over and over again, and uh, I'm so frustrated with it. And I know, I know the people in Nebraska are too. I think that that that's a key part of that power, man. Is is that you are you know the voice of all those mice. You're channeling the frustration and the disappointment and the anger, and also the optimism of how things can be better. When folks told you you couldn't do it. You wouldn't be competitive. Um, the, the ground is, is kind of moved beneath you or you've moved the ground beneath you over this last uh, six months. But can you talk about the independent piece? Because th this is significant. If you get elected, you'll be the only true independent uh, in the Senate. You'll be the only independent veteran. Uh, you've said you're not going to caucus with the Democrats and Republicans. I'm assuming that that hasn't changed. Um, but but part of what you know Deb Fisher is saying is you're not really an independent. Um, but you're seeing a lot of support from independents around the country. Um, what, what have you learned about, you know, the attacks that will come at you that are unique when you're an independent? This is a common thing that independents aren't really independent. They don't know, they can't choose or they're indecisive or they're hiding who they are. This is kind of a, a series of playbooks that people have used before. It doesn't seem to be working. Um, but can you can you talk about what that what, what's going on around that, please? Yep. Yep. Well, I've been a registered independent from the time I could vote. You go back uh, and, and anybody could look up the voter files and uh, verify that fact. Uh, 
Uh, I've never been able to put myself in a tiny little red or blue box. Uh, you know, that's that's just who I am. I, I, I think uh, I'm fiscally conservative. Uh, I think there's there's 35 trillion reasons why people in Nebraska should be voting for me. Uh, and, uh, you know, there there's some some viewpoints on uh, the left side. I agree with, too. So it's, uh, you know, uh, that's what. But but again, that's what being an independent means. It means you're working for the people and that's it. Uh, that's that's what I believe an in independent is. And uh, I think, you know, there's there's more registered independents than there are uh, registered Republicans. And then also registered Democrats. There's over 300,000 of us in a state of uh, 1.2 million registered voters. So it's a, uh, you know, it's people, people are starting to wake up that we're, uh, again, ruled by cats. Uh, and and we're, we're all just looking for something different. And uh, so imagine, if you will, for a second, the ramifications on American politics, if Nebraska does the right thing and elects an independent candidate to the U.S. Senate. Uh, the rest of the country, first of all, would be like, holy crap, do you see what Nebraska did, mm -hmm. right? So now nurses, teachers, plumbers, carpenters, truck drivers, people who stare at computer screens in a cubicle all day can now know that they can run for higher office or, or, or any office for that matter um, without the backing of corporations, without the backing of, of uh, even a party. Uh, and, uh, you know, in two years, there's another round of House and Senate seats up. Four years, another round of House. Six years, another round of House and Senate seats up. Uh, so hopefully there'll be a big enough group of people by then. Uh, and we can help them as long as they're interested in uh, the same values that, that I hold, which is campaign finance reform, ending Citizens United, getting the money out of politics. Because until we do that, it's just, you know, the cats are going to take care of the cats. That's it. Uh, and there's a lot there's a lot of talk, you know, about democracy in America right now. But I think it's important for folks that don't know to understand the history of Nebraska, where you've got the bicameral. You've had a, a, a history in that state of independence. Uh, you've had, you know, mavericky, you know, moderate, independent, also specifically veterans. You've had Bob Kerry there, who I know has endorsed your campaign Medal of Honor recipient. You've had Chuck Hagel, who went on to become secretary of defense. But there's a unique atmosphere that's been created in Nebraska also that kind of primes the pump for Nebraska, not only to elect you, but to be a model for this country uh, in how democracy could be better. Um, can you talk about the veterans piece? You know, right now you're wearing, for folks who aren't watching on YouTube and, and are listening, you got your USS Constellation hat on, you served in the Navy. In my view, it's different for veterans because veterans can help define this independent movement and put country first, they're trusted. But can you talk about what it's like when you're uh, running as a veteran and the veterans you're meeting out there on the campaign trail? Yeah. Yeah. I was in, uh, I believe it was Fremont, Nebraska. We were at, a, we were at an event, uh, and it was an event celebrating veterans. Uh, I was there campaigning, uh, but also as a veteran myself, I wanted to support the cause. You know, I gave my 20 bucks for a bowl of chili. Uh, but I was talking to a Vietnam, a uh, group of Vietnam vets, great guys. They, they were telling stories and, in in such graphic detail, uh, I was blown away and hurt. I mean, a lot of emotions come through listening to these guys tell their stories. But uh, one of these guys, he's a staunch Republican. And uh, I told him who I was and I was running and, uh, you know, that I was running against a Republican. And he goes, well, you got my vote. And I'm like, well, just that easy. He goes, yeah. He goes, you're you, you signed on the dotted line. And I go, OK. And uh I said, yeah, I did. And he goes, but that means something. And, and what it means is you were willing to uh, put your life on the line and pay the ultimate sacrifice for the country that you love. Uh, that's why I'm going to vote for you. And, uh, you know, that resonated with me. And that and that, that, that means something because, you know, what is it? 1% of the population uh, signs that dotted line. And uh, then I did it again. Uh, I joined the Nebraska Army National Guard to continue my service after I got out of the Navy. I was a, a 19 kilo aboard an M1A1 Abrams tank crew. And uh, I signed the dotted line. I got an honorable discharge there, too. So uh, that's what being a veteran means to me. And uh, I would do it all over again. I'd do it right now. If uh, if if the country was in peril and I had to step up, I, I might have to dye my my beard to, to get back in. <laughs> But, uh, you know, that that is the veteran piece and it's important and, and we need to take care of our veterans. Uh, 
Deb Fisher, my opponent, voted against uh, extending benefits to uh, burn pit victims. That's disgusting. Uh, you know, we got to take care of the people who are taking care of us and who signed on that dotted line. And then they're paying. They're paying for it now. And uh, she votes not to help them. Come on. Yep. I, th I think this is a big, big, important, you know, factor in in your success so far and, and why I think so many of the veterans community and the independent community are, are rallying around you. We've seen this, you know, among other candidates, too. I've had our Meet the Independent Veteran Candidate series on. We've had folks like Shalane Etchinson, the great Nick Batter, who's running in Omaha for the State House. He's another outstanding vet. You know, you got 117,000 or so veterans in Nebraska. Um, I think they're coming out for you. We see that. Independent Veterans of America endorse you. You've got endorsements from the railroads and lots of working people. But can I ask you to go back in time? Because I don't think you've gotten a chance to talk enough about your Navy service. Is there anything you learned in the Navy uh, back when you were a young man that's now uh, poised you for success as a candidate? I know they're very different. But what did you learn in the Navy or what did you experience in the Navy that set you up for, for success now? Yeah, I think it started. Uh, I think it started that very first morning in the barracks when the trash cans started flying around at 4 a.m. <laughs> I woke up. I woke up to that. And like, holy crap, what did I just do? Uh, <laughs> but it instills. It instills. It instills a discipline uh, in you that uh, never goes away, uh, and that's that's helped shape my work ethic. Uh, you know, I mentioned I've done 160 publicly advertised events. It's exhausting. But, uh, you know, I, I have a I have a certain level of discipline that I believe that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Uh, but then, I, you know, aboard my aircraft carrier, I, I did two Western Pacific cruises. So I spent I spent well over a year and a half uh, out at sea. Uh, maybe more than that. I'm not sure. But, two, the, you know, those are six month cruises. And then we did all kinds of other ones in between. Um, but I got to travel the world uh, as a young man, and uh, I think I think traveling is is the great educator. You know, it uh, you get to see other cultures, you get to see the way other people live and do things, and the way they treat you, and uh, the way they treat each other, and those are all learning experiences uh, that's helped shape me to who I am today, uh, as well as making sure I'm back in time to uh, catch my ship to go to the next port. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's uh it's hitting hard, man. I mean, I was honored to be with you on 9-11, and I know you got a chance to visit the memorial here in New York, which is just a couple of blocks away. Um, and I think you know it's it's a time to call on patriotism. And and I, I want to just focus on Deb Fisher for a second because I think the contrast is very stark, and I'm not sure folks fully understand it. I mean, she is an incumbent. I think she's lazy, she's cowardly, I would say, because she's avoiding you. She won't even debate you. Uh, and, and she's not a veteran. She's never served. So in times like this, especially where the world is is unstable, we have obvious threats to our national security. We need people who, who've served in uniform uh, serving in, in public office. And it seems like an extension of that service. But her strategy of avoiding you, right, not not acknowledging you, not debating you is, is pretty disrespectful. Um, do you think she's going to try that all the way through and, until the election? Yeah, I think they're doubling down. Uh you know, we turned in 12,000 signatures uh, from all 93 counties, which was a huge feat. That's how strong of a team I got and uh, how dedicated they are to this. Uh, and then and then the first independent poll of the race came out, had her at 39, me at 38. So at that point, uh, she couldn't ignore me any longer. Uh, so she went negative right out of the gate, started calling me things that I'm not. Uh, nothing she's saying on, on TV is true about me. Uh, and I think people in Nebraska are a heck of a lot smarter than she's given them credit for. Uh, well, the polling data proves that. But, you know, if, if I'm a, if I'm a two term incumbent U.S. senator, I'm touting my accomplishments. I'm, I'm telling the people of Nebraska why you need to reelect me. And, uh, you know, she's not doing that. Instead, she's she's attacking me. And uh, that just goes to me, shows her her true character. Uh, but people are sick of it. So since. $3 million, well, probably over over $3 million now, uh, $3 million in, in attack ads. And, and one month later, that 39 to 38 has turned into 50 to 44 uh, for me. So people people aren't buying it. They're not believing it. It, it. It's so extreme what she's saying about me. Uh, it's ridiculous. People are seeing right through it. 
So it's 50 to 44. We got, you know, less than a month till the election, got a, a three weeks or so. Uh, in, in my view, you are the tip of the spear for for veterans, uh, for the independent movement, uh, you know, potentially for the, the, the fate of the Senate. Uh, there's a lot of different reasons for folks to be interested in Nebraska, even if they're not from Nebraska. I know you've, you've made a good case to the folks in Nebraska, and I hope more of them are listening today and listening every day. But to, to everybody else in this country, I think this is a real uh, critical turning point in, in the future of our country, not just at the presidential level, but especially in your race. So I, I want to give you the floor for, you know, a final question here, Dan. You know, we got a couple weeks to go. Uh, w what's your uh, rally cry to people uh, on, on why they should support you? Keeping in mind, you know, Mitch McConnell, Deb Fisher, uh, they're dumping millions, are probably going to dump tens of millions in your race. And you're going to be in a, in a dogfight, you know, with, and, and greatly outgunned as you have been before. Uh, what's your message to to all Americans around the country who are now just waking up to the potential of this race? Yeah. So I uh, I've taken on a corporation out of time. Uh, when they made record profits, they made extra they made an extra two billion dollars. The CEO gave himself a two million dollar raise. The board enriched themselves. The stockholders enriched themselves. Then they tried to take from us. Uh, we stood up and they spent $700 million to try to break us. And it didn't work because corporations, they have the influence and they have the money. But uh, we as people, or we the people, kind of sounds cliche and corny, uh, but we have, we have the power. We have the power with our boat. When we stand together, uh, we, that's how I'm going to win. And, uh, you know, all, all the polling data indicates once people hear my message versus uh, Deb Fisher's message, both positive, uh, we go up 15 to 20 points in every one of those polls. So uh, we have to be instrumental in getting that getting that uh, out. Uh, I'm never going to outspend Deb Fisher. It's just not uh, within the realm of possibilities, but I don't need to. I just need to get the message out to people. And uh, once they hear it, uh you know, I think uh, I think they they understand how how genuine I am and and how much I I just want to help people. I think they are seeing it, man, and uh, that's why I've been honored to know you. Um, you know, every interaction I have, I, I I see the depth of your character and and the extent of your commitment, and and the whole country's seeing it now. And I think that's really exciting because you're also inspiring a new generation of independent candidates to show that you can do it. You've already gotten farther than just about anybody right i mean evan mcmullen came a little close you're past him you know even if it was a close loss for you you've come further than any other independent candidate in recent history but you're in a position to win so i encourage everybody to help you win it's about nebraska it's about veterans it's about independence but it's about the, the fabric of our country and you're on the front line uh leading that charge man so i look forward to celebrating with you uh maybe on veterans day which is a week after the election or army navy you're going to play in december uh, you know, that's the one area you and I don't get along. You get the Navy flag behind you. I was at the Army game this weekend with my boys, and you can see the Army stuff behind me. So I look yeah. forward to raising a glass and, and yeah, they, celebrating uh, you uh, uh, after the election, my friend. They, have, they haven't they have both been ranked in the top 25 since uh, this month and in 1960. Yeah, they're going to play. They might play twice, right? They could play for the conference championship yeah. and then play a week later for Army Navy. I mean, that's going to be something else. Well, Blake Horvath's going to put it all over you guys. That's all I got to say. <laughs> oh, 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 man. <laughs> Daly, we, we got a Heisman quarterback, man. Uh, Daly's the real deal. I saw him score four touchdowns in the first half. And I'll tell you one thing. Deb Fisher's probably not and never been to an Army-Navy game, uh, won't be at the Army-Navy game, but we will all uh, be there to celebrate you and, and celebrate America. Keep after him, man. Give him hell. All the best to you and your family, uh, and, and best of luck. Stay vigilant. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Oh, and, and go Army. Yeah. <laughs>